Hey guys, sorry about the long delay between videos on this one. I've been on late shift and basically working nights, so I haven't been able to do much video uh, work for you. Also had a lot of problems with technology at the moment. My old Dell died on me and I've not been able to video edit anything. Um, for some unknown reason, technology is not like me at the moment. I've lost a PSP, uh, DS and a hard drive, all technical faults. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but yeah, anyway. Um, now, we have got a new laptop, so you'll probably see me have a few little problems while I figure out the little quirks in it, so hopefully the video is not too bad. Um, the Persona, Persona review is coming, but unfortunately I'm finding it really hard to actually get video off of PSP at the moment. Uh, but, as I said, it will come once I get those videos loaded up. Anyway, so with all the problems I've been having getting those videos out, I have found one game that's really made me smile lately, and this is Armed and Dangerous. So if you look at the first video I ever made for YouTube, which was called We Love the French, you can see this is a game I wanted to do for a long time. Unfortunately my old computer wasn't strong enough to actually video edit from Fraps on Steam. So I haven't been able to do it. But here we go. It's time to stop stalling basically. Um, now this is a classic run and gun shooter if Mel Brooks or the Monty Python boys got their hands on it. Um, it's bizarre and that's the best way I can explain it. Now. The game is from Planet Moon Studios, which is really famous for only making one other game, which was Giant Citizen Kaboto. I've never actually played it, but I hear it's very, very similar in humour than, than um, the Dangerous. Now, rumours has it that this is a company made up of ex-Shiny employees. Now, if you ever played Earthworm Jim or you played uh, MDK, then you know what their humour is. It's... Definitely an oddball humour, um, but it's oddball humour done really, really well. The game was published by LucasArts, so expect to see a couple of Star Wars references in there. He's freezing. We gotta warm him up or he'll die. No problem. Here's a little trick I learned back in Kalios during the Lime Dixon War. Oh, good idea, mate. What? I've seen this done before. He'll split open the dead beast's stomach and stick Rexus amongst the warm entrails. Should keep him warm for at least a day. Right, I'll be off here vomiting. No, that's not necessary. Just stick it in there. <laughs> Works better when they're dead. Now this game was released on 2003 for the Xbox and PC. Now I do admit I was a PlayStation boy, so I was a little bit late to the party on this game. Um, basically, I did render Xbox just to see what the fuss was about, and I got two games: Halo and Arm Dangerous. I admit that I actually played this game more than Halo because I just couldn't get used to having a first-person shooter with the little thumbsticks. I've gotten over that now, but when it first came out, I just couldn't quite get the uh, controls down. Um, now, there's two versions, as I said. Now, they're pretty much the same. I do recommend the PC version because you get a little bit better um, aiming with the 
uh, mouse than you do the keypad, uh, so the mouse, the Xbox controller, sorry. Now, there is some parts of the PC game which are taken exactly from the Xbox, and that can be a problem, but I'll get to those later. Now, I do recommend you read the instructions on this game. Um, basically, the game chucks you straight into the action with a cutscene, and that's about it. Um, you don't really get the, the jokes if you don't know the background. Now, I'll try to give you the basics so you can get into the game a little bit easier, because if you're like me and you've got the Steam version, the instruction manual is not actually in there. Now, the game is set in a country called Myola, which it looks very similar to our world, but it's made up of four states. Uh, Midden, Amota, Forge, and Scotland. Scotland? <sighs> I guess it makes sense of all the accents that are in the game. I think there's a uh, place called France as well. <coughs> it's them! You! Show me your papers! What? Papers! Now you listen to me. That's it! Prepare them for a full cavity search! Our teeth are fine! Now stand aside! Show me your papers! Now! You don't need to see our papers. We you don't, don't need, need to, to see, see your, papers. your papers. Good. Uh, you're, um... We, um... Uh, 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 quick! What should I say to them? I'm running out of power! Vic, what, what should, should he say to us? us? He's, He's running, running out, out of, of power. power. Tell them... Tell them they're both teapots. No Scottish miners. Look, just tell them we're not the ones they're looking for. Wait, wait. I can handle this. Um, uh, you're both uh, French. We surrender. Ah! Come on. The lady of the pond waits. Okay, so some important history of the, the Forge you need to know. Now, centuries ago, the Kingdom of Forge has a very bizarre curse placed upon it. Basically, one generation will have an evil genius for a king, but the next one will be a total idiot. Captain Vindaloo, what word of Rexus? Our torture chambers are filled. We'll soon have the information. Oh! Uh, oh! Uh, uh. I never tire of that sound. Stig, my son. Once again, it's time to tell you of the Great Book of Rule. It is now in our possession, and once the Wildwood monks have unlocked it, we'll use its power for supreme rule of the land. Why, we could even use it to increase your intelligence, if you'd like. Would you like that? Stig? Yes, yes, I knew you would. You'll be a great leader one day, my son. Are these your pills? You're only supposed to take one a day, not the entire bottle. Anyway, yes, yes indeed, you'll be a great leader. For it was so ordained 25 years ago when the Knights of Lodor, upon arriving at the great Oracle of Jorfi, saw the great Kinderwook spirit one early morning announcing your coming. We're on the threshold of a new era, my son. Do you have anything to say? Well? Stig have new trick! Oh, what would that be? We'll continue this conversation later. But the evil kings have done slowly enough to take over the whole of the world. Now, enter our merry band of characters, they're called the Lionhearts. The main character in the game and the leader of the group is Roman, the War Roan. Uh, basically think of him as Robin Hood with a machine gun. He's basically a thief with a heart of gold. Uh, he is the leader of the group and pretty much the straight man of the, the cutscenes on this one. He's joined by Q, a reprogrammed combat robot, and basically with a huge addiction to tea. Hey, it's British. Um, and also he's got Jonesy, a basically a Scottish miner who looks like a rat. I'm a mole, you smelly git! Okay, he's a mole. Um, now, Rexon is the other part of the Lionheart. He is, was the keeper of the Book of Rule, which is a hugely powerful magical book. Now, it was so powerful, for safety stakes, Rexon put a curse or a spell on the uh, book, which whoever reads it thinks it's just a manual for making wicker furniture. Again, I did not write this, guys. <laughs> it is what the game is. Uh, with the spell cast, he then retires and go very senile and pick up some very weird personal hygiene issues. Uh, yeah, not nice. Um, now, fast forward to the present. Now, the current evil king of Forge finds out that the Book of Rule may actually have the cure for the 
uh, Kurt Family Curse. Now he sends out a couple of his goons to pick up Rexton, and this is basically where the game starts off. Now Lionheart get to Rexton first before forges troops and decide, well, we're going to steal the Book of Rule off the actual king as well. Now, believe me, this is only the tip of the iceberg of how bizarre this game is. Um, the story of this goes pretty much off the rail, but in a good way. Now, frankly, I can't go too deep in the plot. The game is not to be taken seriously, and basically it's just there so you can blow stuff up. Now, for 2003, the amount of destruction you can cause is impressive. If you can't be bothered shooting a sniper in the window, just blow the house up. Um, since you're majorly unnumbered in this game, you need to make up for the difference in firepower. And basically, you've got your normal machine guns, rifles, and sniper rifles. But then you've got also some of the most inventive weapons I've seen in a game I've seen ever. Um, you get some amazing hand grenades, like the Topsy Turvy Bomb, which basically inverts gravity. And then you also get the Black Hole Bomb, which is basically a vacuum cleaner on steroids. Um, now, my favourite is the Land Shark Gun. You've probably seen some of this in other videos. Basically, you fire this bad boy off into a group of grunts and try not to laugh when you see the guy's reactions. It's absolutely hilarious. Now, honestly, the machine gun is probably the most used and probably one of the better weapons of the whole game. But let's face it, when you get something called the Vindaloo Rocket, you've got to at least try it out. There's only probably about 10 weapons in the game, but believe me, they're all really fun and great to use. So, let's get to the final points now. Let's start with the bad. Now, it is a run and gun shooter, so it does get a little bit repetitive, but that's just the nature of a run and gun shooter. Now, you do have a castle defense section that does change it up a little bit, but for the most part, you're just running around shooting things. But, that's fine. I mean, it's just the type of game it is. If you go into it thinking it's a run and gun shooter, then you're not going to have too many problems. Now, you... That brings me to the next point. The game is really not that long. It's only about 12 hours for an average player. Um, there's really not much replayability on this one. There's no multiplayer. There's no additional modes. There's nothing like that. It's basically, once you play it, you'll enjoy it, but you're not going to go back to it. Now, for the good stuff. The gameplay is really solid. There's been no bugs. There's been no crashes. It's just a really solid game. And you may want to drop the sensitivity down a little bit for the newer mouses because this was made when mice were a little bit less sensitive. Okay, um, voice acting is top notch, and the reason you put, keep pushing on with the repetitive gameplay a little bit is because of the cutscenes. They are really enjoyable. The one liners are perfect from the grunts. And the cutscenes are done really well. And it does show the weird and wonderful world that you're playing in here. Now, graphics were nice for 2003, but they're nothing special. The backgrounds are a little bit bland. But the cutscenes are taken straight from the Xbox version. And although it probably doesn't matter so much when you're playing on the Xbox, when you're using a high-resolution PC screen, it doesn't look that great. But it's not as bad as, say, the Bard's Tale game, which absolutely looks rubbish. Now, the game flows really well, it is challenging, you'll die a lot, but you always seem to get a little bit further once you figure it out. Um, stealth nuts do, do not need to apply on this one, it is a gut, shoot, them, shoot everything and let God sort them out to the game. Now the story is totally bizarre, but this is a, in a good way. You'll meet Elvis Preachers, Leper Colonies, and a lady from the lake who's not like, quite what she seems. If you've grown up with British comedy like, say, Monty Python or Red, Red Dwarf, then you'll get most of the jokes in here. Um, for someone who doesn't grow, hasn't grown up with those type of games, then don't worry, you, the jokes come along fast enough that you'll definitely get a laugh out of this one. Um, Humour is a hard one to, to explain, but yeah, the, you'll get most of the jokes. Now, even the enemy grunts that you come along have funny little one-liners that they shut up and you kill them. So, there's enough here for everybody. Now, the game is no means perfect, but is it worthy of your time? If you can get it cheap enough, now I think on Steam it's going for about $5 to $10, depending on what specials you are. For that price, it's well worth playing for the 12 hours it gives you. It's definitely challenging. Um, it's definitely the most I've laughed at a game for a long time. And the weapons are imagined. The game is a ton of fun. And the actors... And this one, a really high class. I think Tony Jai does the Evil King, which is definitely one of the more Shakespearean actors you can get from games. Now, definitely, it's a solidly recommended game. It's not perfect, but it's definitely the good outweighs the bad on this one. So, if you have a chance to pick it up cheap, definitely have a go. It's well worth the time. So, 
they sound dangerous guys and hopefully the next review won't be out so much longer this time um, I'm hoping to do something a little bit more epic this time we face extinction a rogue soldier leads an unstoppable force across the galaxy and only you stand in his way you understand? You've lost. Everyone you know and love. Everyone you will all die. So I hope all is well and um, we'll see you next time.